Ricky Thompson, Baylor radio sideline analyst, former wide receiver, and then, of course, a part of the NFL with Washington, the Redskins, when that was who they were. We're joined by Ricky Craig Smoke, Paul Catalina, David Smoke. Ricky, thank you very much. I, I'm telling you this, and I mean this sincerely. I have no idea what to expect on Saturday. Do you? Uh, Smoke, I really don't. Uh, I saw a couple of scrimmages, and scrimmages are so hard for me to judge because you, you've got, even if you got one-on-ones, you have an offense and a defense that have watched the other side. They know exactly what they're going to do. They know what the play calls are. And particularly when you have an offense that has maybe scripted the scrimmage, there's just no way to tell because you can't make any adjustments. You can't adjust the play call. You can't do a lot of things that particularly this spread offense will do when you can make adjustments. So it's just hard to tell. So I really just watch individuals and see what I think and judge it from there. And with all that said, I don't have a clue. I really don't. I think that Saturday is going to be so important to see. I do know that this team has a different attitude. I think that's clear. I think the approach will be different. I think the pregame approach will be different. I know the game time approach will be different with, with Dave running the defense, Spav running the offense. I'm really anxious to see how that dynamic works. And I think we'll learn a lot Saturday just from that. But I'm encouraged. I, I think there's a lot of talent out there. And I think here's, here's my one, one thing that I do know. This is probably the fastest team we've had since, oh, at least, 21 and maybe all the way back to some of the browse era team. I know uh, the last team rule had was, was had a lot of speed, but this team can run everywhere. And that's one thing we've been missing. Uh, you can't coach speed and we do have guys that can run. Ricky Thompson segment with us. JJ Joe will join us every other week as well from Baylor radio brought to you by Richard Carr motors and also uh, Alliance bank. Paul Ricky, um, Daquan Finn, name the starter, shouldn't be a surprise. He's super athletic. Um, but how athletic will he have to be if that offensive line struggles? And especially considering last year in the early games where you thought the offensive line could kind of gel and, and push around some of these teams, if they don't do that against Tarleton State, isn't that like a, you know, a, 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 red, a red alert there? Well, I think, yeah, I think possibly it is, but – Remember, too, they have shuffled these guys back and forth positions, different guys, different guys in different positions. And I just think particularly as many new guys as there are involved in that offensive line, it's going to take two or three games to really get guys in the right spot. So I think some of that can be just getting guys in the right spot. Now, against Carlton, whoever they have in there, they should, they should be able to handle it. Now, that doesn't mean they will. Uh, we could have said the same thing about Texas State two years ago or last year, and that didn't happen. But uh, I think talent-wise, these guys look really good getting off the bus, if nothing else, I'm telling you. They, they look like an offensive line, and I just think we get these guys in the right, right spot. But going back to Finn, uh, again, can't coach speed. I think his reaction is really good. Uh, his arm is probably average, but it doesn't have to be a great arm in this offense, so that doesn't bother me. And the pure fact, to me, there's nothing worse on a defense than being third and nine, having all your guys covered, and you've got a quarterback that takes off and runs for 15. That is so disheartening. And with Finn back there, that's something we haven't had in a long time. And I think it's going to be a weapon, and I think Spab will use it. So uh, in that regard, speed everywhere, and I'm, I'm encouraged by that. And you're right, no surprise, he was named the starter. Ricky, uh, who's a name, and maybe, maybe it's Daquan Finn, but who's a name or a unit maybe you've, you've heard about this offseason that, that intrigues you uh, most? Well, you know what, one of them, I'm going to surprise, I'm going to pick the receivers okay. for, for one, and I think, 
again, we're going back to speed. We're going back to some of these transfers. Uh, Ashton Hawkins, for one, the dude is probably 170. Uh, he's got hands that were like Raymond Chester, a tight end I played with. They're <laughs> huge. Yeah. And, and I've seen him make two or three one-handed snags. And I don't mean just reach up and stop it. I mean catch it like it's a baseball. Uh, great hands, uh, really good speed. And I think the combination of him and Monterey in that inside slot, number one, I think it's going to make Monterey better because he better play because Ashton's going to. And uh, I, I heard him at one scrimmage coming back to the huddle and, and he screamed, throw me the dang ball. Not the exact word he used. But he was saying, throw me the ball. And, man, I like that. Uh, it's okay. Get ticked off out there and want the ball in your hands. And I think he's a guy that we're really going to be excited about. And then, of course, you've got all the guys coming back. Hal Presley, uh, Keytron, uh, Jackson, outside – and I tell you what, Trig, my, this guy is a specimen. And if he gets his head around this offense, he is a guy that is what six three, six four, two fifty, and they can play him in the slot in the spread. That's tough, guys. You just you put a five nine corner on that and see what happens. Yeah, and it's, it's also if in fact there are some disruptions because of the continuity of the offensive line. But to have a safety valve, and he's more than that. He's, a, he's also a weapon down the field because the, the tight end is needed because of uh, the fact that you may not have time to throw it. And, and if they don't, that will be disappointing. Although, as you said, it's been kind of a, a big bowl of, uh, what, uh, gumbo with different ingredients from different parts, from transfers to those who have come back, to those who were also recruited. Ricky, uh, you mentioned the demeanor. Uh, it's one thing to say it. It's another thing to do it. How do you know? You, you, do you know? Do you know if someone's just saying it or when they actually truly do believe it? Well, I I don't think you know it till till you see Saturdays. It's I mean, practice is practice. What Alan Iverson said many years ago. Oh yeah. But I mean, you've got to practice and you got to do it well. I don't. I'm not making light of that. But I, practice doesn't count. I mean, those catches in practice, you don't see those on any stat. You don't see practice tackles on the stat sheet. The only ones you see are the ones under the lights. And it's a different atmosphere. You can't recreate that speed in practice. I don't care what you do. So it's game day. And I think that's all that we'll know. And that's the only way we'll be able to tell is how these kids react during the game. But I just think there's an opportunity there that we've not had the last couple of years as far as maybe talent and the attitude. And I think they do need to win a couple of early games to get the feel of it. you got to win the Tarleton game. Utah on the road is going to be tough. You have to come back and beat Air Force and then go get after Colorado. You know, you end, end that up three and one or so. Uh, there's no telling where these guys go after that because you've got some confidence uh, – and some wins in your pocket. So I think these first games are going to be very, very important. Ricky, defensively, is the strength of the team in the secondary, or is it up front? Paul, I think it's up front. Mm -hmm. Uh, That may be the reverse of what some think, and I'm not saying that the secondary is not talented. Of course, you got Caden Jenkins back and Lemire and a lot of these guys that are talented and and good players that – I have a lot of depth back there as well, but it just seems like these front seven guys, uh, to me, look pretty talented. And if you've got a pass rush up there and the ability to stop the run and make these teams throw the ball, I think that's a huge advantage. I know we've struggled some there. So uh, I think it's these front seven guys that have a chance to be pretty good. Ricky, what was it like after all of the offseason work and, you know, in the case of the NFL training camps, but I guess I guess training camps in college as well, but uh, just what was that like to finally get into that first real game, that feeling for better and maybe even for worse because you realize, hey, we're not quite ready here, but what, what was that like from your standpoint? Yeah, I, I, I think, Craig, it was always a relief. <laughs> it was always so good to have camp over. I mean, that that is such a grind, and I know – don't particularly have two-a-days like some of us old guys did, but 
it's still a grind. It, it's it's hard. It's hot. It's a lot of work. You're going against your own guys. And I just think it's such a relief to get out of camp and get into a schedule and play other guys and really see where you are. And I think that attitude and plus the other thing to remember too, that practice backs off. They, they try to get these guys legs under them and it should be, and other than health issues, this should be as good as these guys have felt since the day they walked in the first part of August. Ricky, it's about to start. Uh, and you, of course, played the game at, at every level, high school, college, and pro. Can you describe whether that ever changed you uh, from year to year, the opening week of the season, veteran, rookie, or whatever? Uh yeah, I think so. I, I mean, I can I can go back to an NFL start of a season where we won one that we weren't expected to and ended up being a really good year. And even back in 74, a game that we lost, most, everybody knows what it is. We went to Oklahoma, 50-point underdogs, whatever it is, and that ball game's 7-5 to five with 10 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. And you've got Joe Washington and all that crew on the other side number one ranked team in the country. Uh, I think we knew after that we were pretty good. And going into it, I don't – you know, you can hear you think you're good, you think you are, but I don't think you really know till it's over. But that cane could have either sent that season down the tubes if we were gotten blown out. But as it were, it turned into a conference championship team that after that game, even after a loss, I think we knew we were pretty darn good. You play the number one team in the nation on the road and have them on the rope late, uh, that tells you something. So, uh, yeah, I, I think that is important. And even with this team, uh, Tarleton, I mean, I think if you go out and you blow them out, and I'm not saying we are, but if you do that early, I don't care who you're playing. That gives you some confidence. I just don't think there's any doubt it does. And I think we saw what the first game last year did to us versus going out and getting a big win like that. So Saturday's important, guys. I don't care who we're playing. Ricky, thank you very much. Can't wait to the next time. We'll have J.J. next week, and we'll have you the week of that, well, 1974, uh, the memories uh, against the Air Force. Look forward to that and some of your memories of that great year that you mentioned that won the Southwest Conference title. Ricky Thompson with us, former Baylor receiver, and also sideline analyst for Baylor Radio on 365 Sports.